Following on the heels of the Pick It Up Ghana campaign, regulations under the Environmental Protection Act were passed in Ghana's National Assembly, which aimed to provide an effective framework for the introduction, implementation and enforcement of measures to reduce littering. We must do everything we can to keep our surroundings clean. Stop littering. Do the right thing. This week on El Dorado Shines, we will take a closer look at these new regulations and the impact they are likely to have in the push to reduce littering and clean up the environment. To tell us more, here is Clint Babulal. The litter enforcement regulations is officially known as the Environmental Protection Litter Enforcement Regulations and it was made legal on the 16th of November 2013 and it comes under Section 68 of the Environmental Protection Act of 1996. Now, littering is, littering is detrimental to our society, both socially, environmentally, as well as economically. I mean, it's aesthetic, aesthetically unpleasing, it's dangerous to human health and ecological health, and of course it's costly to the state and the public. These new litter prevention measures being implemented by the Ministry of Natural Resources and the Environment follow closely the extensive work already undertaken through the Pick It Up Guyana campaign. To give us some background on this initiative, here is Aretha Ford. Pick It Up Guyana was or is intended to give support to the ongoing efforts to address the issue of solid waste management in Guyana. A major component of that campaign um, is public awareness. Additionally, Pick It Up Guyana would also provide support to community-based organizations, non-governmental organizations, any individual who is willing to execute some enhancement activity in their community, um, as well as guiding policy that would help to address the issue and partnering with private and public organizations um, to execute activities. New litter prevention regulations will take effect from March 2014. A person who transports along a public place any material that is likely to fall off or blow off shall be guilty of an offense. In the case of an individual, the penalty will be a fine of $50,000 or in the case of a business, a fine of $100,000. Stop littering. Do the right thing. A message from the Ministry of Natural Resources and the Environment. Extensive efforts were made in 2013 to raise awareness and encourage the public to help keep the environment clean. We had a lot of public awareness activities being conducted, um, ranging from presentations, we would have hosted volunteer empowerment workshops throughout the country, and we also had major collaborations with the Guyana Shines program that's coming out of the United States Embassy where we aired a documentary called Trashed that speaks about the global waste management issue and we also had collaboration with the Japan International Cooperation Agency um, so for any person who uses public transportation they would see the Keep Guyana Clean stickers on buses and probably on taxis um, we also would have executed in collaboration with the Environmental Protection Agency the international coastal cleanup that looks to not only remove garbage from our coastlines but also to collect data to inform our policy makers. New litter prevention regulations will come on stream from March 2014. Stop littering. Do the right thing. Authorities will be looking to work even more closely with communities and other stakeholders in 2014 as the push to reduce littering intensifies. We will be working more with communities um, and getting them more involved in the process of waste management at that level. So we'll be looking at activities like composting, um, we will talk about waste separation at the household level. Um, 
one of the other things we'll focus on is strengthening the volunteer program so we will harness the, the strengths and the capabilities of our volunteers so that they will go out into their communities and strengthen the work of Pick It Up Guyana. The public has been supportive of measures to reduce littering, recognizing the importance of maintaining a clean environment. We have received tremendous support from the general public um, with regards to it's, it's a very slow process, it's sad to say that it's a slow process with regards to the change in attitude which is what the campaign really seeks to bring about, our change in attitude towards our environment and more so um, how we dispose of our garbage. Um, we have received uh, calls from religious groups, um, from as I said non-governmental organizations they've come to us and they've asked us you know uh, we want to do an enhancement activity for our community we want to do this for our church how can pick it up again be involved and I feel that that call from the communities themselves um, speaks volumes about the success of the program provided that we still have a long way to go in achieving that visible change that we want to see in Georgetown and of course in the wider Ghana. Moving forward, Pick It Up Ghana will now be working closely with the Environmental Protection Agency on the new litter prevention regulations, which are set to come on stream from March 2014. The litter prevention regulations is one of the regulations under the Environmental Protection Act. So naturally, the Environmental Protection Agency is the agency that will enforce those regulations. Um, we will look at the, um, the enforcement of the regulations and also prior to that, there will be a public awareness um, campaign to sensitize the public on, on what the offenses are under the regulations. New litter prevention regulations will come on stream from March 2014. Ensure you play your part by helping to stop the dumping of garbage in canals and on parpets. Stop littering and do the right thing. Pick It Up Again will be integrally involved with uh, the Environmental Protection Agency in getting the, the word out and in engaging the public in what the litter regulations would entail. So a lot of our focus, at least for the early part of this year, will be on the litter regulations. Authorities also recognize that the business community has an integral role to play in the implementation of these new regulations and efforts will be made to garner their support. At the Ministry of Natural Resources and the Environment, um, we recognize that the private sector is one of our most important stakeholders one of our key partners in ensuring that this piece of legislation um, is successful, particularly um, with regards to its enforcement. Um, we do recognize that businesses have the responsibility to dispose of their waste in a proper manner, but the private sector also has the responsibility um, for being creative, for being um, having some sort of ingenuity um, in setting up developments that would allow for waste collection, uh, waste recycling, um, reusing of our, our disposable waste. So the private sector really, um, we expect their support and we will also be creating incentives for those businesses that really take up the mantle with regards to the litter regulation. As business operators, we need to be responsible. Stop littering. Do the right thing. As it relates to the new regulations, the public should have an understanding of what exactly litter and the act of littering means. Litter is the most um, physical form of pollution that is visible. And littering is generally 
any material that is disposed of incorrectly. By any material we mean it can be in a liquid or a solid form or a combination of both. And disposed of incorrectly means if litter is not placed in a receptacle or a designated area, then it is disposed of incorrectly. Um, litter is, you know, very evident in our society today and it is part of the, it is an important component of the environmental agenda here at the Ministry of Natural Resources and the Environment, including other public bodies and agencies. And the government of Guyana has seen the need to prevent and manage litter and as such has seen support in this aspect from the Environmental Protection Agency who has worked very closely in drafting the litter regulations. Litter is very visible in our society today. Georgetown is one of the key places where you can see a lot of litter as you walk along the streets. So it is something that is an eyesore um, first and foremost and you also have other health associated um, risks that um, with litter so we need to get rid of, of of the problem with littering to rid the city of littering and also littering exists in the country too countryside too so therefore it's something that is a uh, necessary across the country and uh, not only in Georgetown but the focus initially would be um, in Georgetown and at the same time whilst that is taking taking off we are going to look at the NDCs in the various um, regions. New litter prevention regulations will take effect from March 2014. Owners of public transportation shall provide in a convenient place one or more receptacles for litter. The penalty for failure to provide this is a fine of $15,000. Stop littering. Do the right thing. A message from the Ministry of Natural Resources and the Environment. Offenses listed under the new regulations target the public as well as corporate entities. Many of the offenses um, target the public and the businesses or corporate bodies and the fines can vary from $50,000 to as much as $100,000 and um, it's very detailed. I always encourage your passengers not to throw garbage out of the window. Stop littering. Do the right thing. One aspect of the litter regulations cover uh, drivers. Now, persons who are found, and it's very detailed, persons who are found littering onto a private public area and roadways are considered public areas, parkets as well. If someone deposits waste or material out of a vehicle, um, they can be fined uh, as much as $50,000. If that person cannot be identified, the driver of the vehicle will be fined. And if the vehicle is stationary and no one can ascertain who the driver is, the owner of that vehicle will be fined. The new litter prevention regulations bring with it more stringent penalties for littering. It is hoped that this will serve to further dissuade persons and businesses from engaging in this practice. Persons would have known and the general public would have been aware of a fine of $10,000 previously existing for persons who have been littering. However, with the new litter regulations, you have steeper fines. We have, we're employing litter wardens and local authorities to enforce the litter regulations which previously did not exist, a component that the ministry saw was unsuccessful to the existing litter fines. Um, currently, the Environmental Protection Agency, with support from the ministry, is executing a, an aggressive public awareness campaign. Litter wardens will be deployed throughout the country to ensure that the new regulations are enforced. 
The public is therefore advised to stop littering and properly dispose of waste material. So you never know who is a litter warden. You don't know who out there. It can be the person standing next to you, driving in a car, or coming up the street. You never know. So in essence, we really shouldn't be littering because you don't know who is watching and you know if you're going to receive a fine or you're going to have to go to court. And also if persons cannot pay their fine, there is a penalty of imprisonment for approximately three months. The litter regulations also focus on um, if receptacles do not exist, it is not an excuse for littering. So if someone stops you to issue a citation or a ticket for littering, your defense cannot be there is no receptacle or there is no bins existing. You must find a bin or keep it or put something in place for that. Polluting waterways and vegetation through mining activities is an offense. Be responsible. Protect the environment. The appointment of the new chairman and commissioner of the Guyana Geology and Mines Commission should see further development in the mining sector. So says Minister of Natural Resources and the Environment, Robert Persaud, who made these remarks at a reception held on Saturday, February 8. Guyana is making more lands and resources available for mineral production and investments in the natural resources sector. These initiatives are being pursued in keeping with the country's commitment to protect the environment. Uh, not only gold has played a significant part in the Guyanese economy, but also the diamond producers, bauxite, um, stone also did very well, among other uh, minerals. And this was due to some prudent management and support from the ministry in achieving these objectives or these targets that were set in 2013. Um, we, wish the, we wish to give our, our commitment to supporting the continue supporting the sector for future growth and wish the GGDMA and all other stakeholders a successful 2014. Thank you. I haven't been around for a couple of weeks, I can tell you the job is big and the task is onerous. Um, we have to continue to ensure, as Dr. Ganga said, make this particular industry significant in terms of contribution to our gross domestic product, foreign exchange earnings, and therefore stabilizing our economy. And so my role as chairman of the board has been defined for me even before I came here. Um, we're working on interventions, hopefully, that we can introduce into the sector that will give us that kind of confidence that we will continue to make this sector an efficient and productive one. Well, we wanted to introduce formally the new chairman, Mr. Tinton Williams, whose CV and whose background, I'm quite sure you all are fully aware of, I need not to recall, only to say that he has been an outstanding leader of the private sector and someone who recognizes the role of the private sector in terms of job creation and certainly would recognize the vitality and the considerable strength of the mining sector in our country. And his, and I'm quite sure under his leadership, we will not only see continued growth, but our emphasis is on expanded growth as well as diversification. Uh, because of the unstable and the unpredictable nature of minerals, commodities as a whole, we need to diversify. We need to ensure that the wide range of potential resources that we have are fully developed, fully utilized, but also doing so in harmony with our environment as well as our social obligation. And I'm quite sure under his leadership, we will see not only continued emphasis on the policies and the programs that will promote and allow such growth, but there are a number of new ventures that we will be pursuing in this regard. And as the year unfolds and in the Perhaps in the coming period, we will be looking at some of those new areas. But the emphasis for this year would be on how it is that we fully utilize our resources, but also how do we better manage the sector in terms of compliance and in terms of enforcement. 
At the same time, too, I wanted to use the opportunity to um, to introduce formally our commissioner, commissioner of the GGMC, who perhaps has been acting for some time, a year, uh, a year. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and it's good when you act. So when you ready for the task, you perfected it, and certainly um, with his appointment and his background, both from a mining as a mining engineer but also his background and experience working on the environmental side, I think offers us someone at the helm with that balance who understand the realities of extraction and balancing it with the needs of the environment. And I think with his appointment, um, with Mr. Newell Dennison as the Deputy Commissioner, we are in the position of uh, just about to advertise another Deputy Commissioner, and we will be strengthening the discussions with the Chairman and the Commissioner um, we will be strengthening the managerial capability and capacity of the GGMC in terms of technical, but as well as to service the organization and service our staff, because we have hard-working staff out there too. And we want to ensure that we have the best facilities. We have about nine new stations being constructed. We have a number of mobile stations for the mining sector alone being constructed. We're looking at new training opportunities, um, how it is we can support their social and other development. So it is not only about getting the work done, but also looking at the individuals who are tasked with it. <coughs> Last year has been a, a quite an interesting year. We've had a record high declaration, <coughs> and that is extremely um, good. And I want to salute our miners. I want to salute the GGDME and, the, and all those who played a part. Salute also our dealers in this regard. But if you have the quiet conversation around we all know that much more could have been declared. And I want to challenge everyone at the start of, as, as we, we get into full production that we seek to declare nearly on, in fact, every single ounce of gold that is produced in this country. Because we continue to receive reports within the Guyanese community and even <coughs> our um, allies outside of Guyana about reports and allegations of smuggling. And I want to, and, I'm, and it is my nature, I like to throw and confront the problems up front. And I want to encourage, and I know the GGDME has been very firm in this, but I want to encourage all others, whatever influence you have, to ensure that every single ounce is declared, because that is how the people of Ghana benefit, but also it will do the sector well. I think this year we will be able to build on our achievements, um, not only the gold sector, but we've seen remarkable growth in the diamond sector. We'll also be encouraging much more prospecting and exploration activities in other minerals. You know, we had the setback in Mori and very disappointing in terms of the short-sightedness of some individuals and groupings. But we are going to move beyond that. And we're going to continue to explore and develop whatever potential exists because we cannot be a country talking about mining and we're only focusing on gold or bauxite, quarrying, sun, and diamond. But we have, and the work has been done, to show that we have the potential for other range of minerals, other range of, of, of material that we can so extract and develop in our country. And that is why I'm quite sure with the team that we have and the emphasis that we're placing in terms of international collaboration, we're moving very quickly on our extractive industry transparency initiative subscription. We're doing a lot of work on that. Uh, we're working very closely with a number of other um, friendly governments in this regard in building capacity in dealing with some of the other constraints. In another two or three weeks, we'll be meeting with all the environmental groups, all the um, NGOs, <coughs> international and local as well, and we're looking at how it is too that we can get them more involved in a positive way, in a constructive way, in terms of on Understanding the, di the dynamics in terms of what goes into a country such as ours in terms of developing our resources but doing that um, in terms in harmony. Welcome to Guyana, the gateway to South America. A pristine haven of abundant natural resources. We are a nation born in sacrifice and enriched by our togetherness.
When we play, we celebrate every effort. When we celebrate, we salute more than success. We exude our right to move forward. New litter prevention regulations will come on stream from March 2014. Ensure you play your part by helping to stop the dumping of garbage in canals and on parpets. Stop littering and do the right thing. Guyana is making more lands and resources available for mineral production and investments in the natural resources sector. These initiatives are being pursued in keeping with the country's commitment to protect the environment. You've been watching Eldorado Shines. Do join us again next week for another program. Until then, do remember that we all have a role to play in protecting the environment. Stop littering and ensure that you do the right thing.